today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you're looking for a boat that's serious about fishing inshore while having the option to go offshore on a calm day, we'll be taking a look at the Blue Wave 22 RS1, a bay boat with an overall length of 22 feet 8 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Blue Wave 22 RS1. If you want to get to your fishing spot quickly, a stepped hole decreases drag and improves performance, allowing for efficient, high-speed running across a large body of water. If you're planning on fishing with live bait and want to ensure they stay alive for the entire day of fishing, a live well with sufficient water flow is a must. Comfortable helm seating designed to swivel reduces fatigue by offering the operator and a passenger a comfortable place to navigate and fish from. If you want a boat that's outfitted to fish, yet has an equal amount of amenities for the family, we'll be looking at the, the Ranger 2350 Bay Ranger, a bay boat with an overall length of 23 feet 5 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Ranger 2350 Bay. Bow seating provides a comfortable place for the whole family to relax and enjoy valuable time on the water together. When bringing the family along, having easy console access with a marine head and plenty of room for storage helps to accommodate everyone's needs while on the water. Stern seating provides the most comfortable and safest place for additional passengers to sit while the boat is underway. If you want to comfortably venture out to hunt pelagics and don't want to sacrifice form or function, we'll be taking a look at the Stewart Boatworks 27. A center console with an overall length of 27 feet, a beam of 8 feet 8 inches, and max horsepower rating of 600. Standout features on the Stewart Boatworks 27. A flush deck will be appreciated by anglers as it allows them to run from stern to bow without tripping on anything, especially when fighting fish. Multiple fish boxes give the ability to keep the day's catch fresh while also offering ample storage for long-range trips. A feature that is often overlooked, quality wiring will make a world of difference when maintaining, repairing, or installing electronics in the console. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Florida Sports from Best Boat. I'm your host Dave East along with my co-host Captain Rick Riles. We're going to look at two bay boats today, similar in size but very different in design, and one larger 27-foot offshore center console. Let's start with the Blue Wave. That's a 22-foot boat. It's a bay boat. does have a stepped hull, increases the performance, gives it a little bit more speed. Some pretty cool features on that boat. That live well with the glass front, that's something we haven't seen before. You can take a barely legal snook and set him in that live well and get the fisheye lens going. He weighs 30 pounds. But no, in all seriousness, in the Ranger, they built such a heritage of great bay boats. And this 23 is no different. It is all Ranger. It is a 23-foot bay boat, but it's got a very, very big console for a 23-foot boat. They put a lot of bow seating. You can fish it just like a bay boat, but if you want to bring the family, they're going to love it. 27-foot Stewart boat works. If you're going to go outside of the inlet, that boat rode fantastic, didn't need a lot of power to push it. You know how much I love that twin layer fish box, okay? You had a fish box and then you had another box underneath it for storage. It was laid out really well. Well, what impressed me on that boat was its shear line. What Stewart Boatworks did is they took a time-tested design and they added a little bit of sex to it, a little bit of style to their shear line. I think they improved a design that's been around for a long time. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous boat, and that's just how it handled offshore. Two bay boats, similar in size, totally different missions, and one really nice offshore center console. If you're interested in any of those three boats, don't go away. When we come back, Host Dave East and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat that's designed for both serious fishing inshore and nearshore, the Blue Wave 22 RS1. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard.
Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Blue Wave 22 RS1. Representing the 17 to 22 foot class in the bay boat category, the Blue Wave 22 RS1 has an overall length of 22 feet 8 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Designed for both inshore and nearshore fishing, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 16 degrees, a dry weight of 2,100 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 60 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. All right, we're aboard the Blue Wave RS-1, and she's a bay boat, 22 feet long, and RS basically stands for reduced surface. It's the only boat they build in their fleet that has a step, and we've talked about it before, what a step does to the running surface of the hull. Where the step comes in is over a, you're traveling a good distance at a high rate of speed. The benefit of the step will absolutely show up at the end of the month when you pay your credit card bill for your gas, you're going to see a difference. But that's not the only feature on this boat that we really like. They did a great job with 22 feet of boat. Starting up here in this front casting deck, first thing, all four compartments are insulated, even the ones on the side. Yes, it's a rod box, but if you do happen to catch a big fish that you're always bragging about, you have a place to put him. Also, too, you were saying earlier about the deck being recessed. To have a little toe kick on here, it tells you when you're at the edge of the deck. If you're fishing and you hit this, you know, hey, I'm at the edge of the deck. Don't go any further. <laughs> Don't take one more step. You'll be wet. I know because I've done it. As we go into the cockpit, I want to show the coolest feature they've got on this boat. Welcome to SeaWorld. I thought the front of this thing was the craziest thing I'd ever seen the first blue wave we saw that had one. But it is really a neat feature. You can keep your fish in there, your bait in there, whatever, and constantly make sure your water flow is okay. But beyond that, it's just cool. <laughs> you put fish in there, you fill it with water, you turn the backlit LED lights on. Who else has that? Who can ever show that? To me, it's just one more feature that kind of sets the boat apart. Really makes you look good at the club at night when you pull up to the dock, too. It, uh, it's wicked. I mean, it's sharp to see. If you need to get to the back of your electronics, they have a tip out storage Oh, bin. you know I love that. You can keep all your stuff in here, but it opens all the way up. That way, if you need to service anything, it's easy to get to. It's, you got to have a cushion here anyway. This is a really good use of the space. Yeah, but step back behind the console. They did a good job with the size of this console. You, you have plenty of room for your electronics. It doesn't have a head, so there's really no reason to make the console any larger than that because it's got enough room. You have storage underneath here, but just the layout is what I like. There's a place for your cell phone, there's cup holders, there's little trays here. This grill here in the face of the console, that's your built-in radio. It's Bluetooth, so it, you can connect it wirelessly to your cell phone or whatever, but having the speakers here, you're going to hear it a lot better than if you had speakers fore and aft. As we move a little further aft, what's my biggest complaint? We've been doing this together for a long time now, and you know my biggest pet peeve we see on a lot of boats. Of course I do. Seating, okay? My bass boat's more comfortable than this boat. I hear it every day. These seats are designed, I think, for your bass boat. Yeah. Well, really for any boat, but I love what they do. They slide side to side so you can adjust your width. Let's say somebody's a little more portly, you can give them more room. Hey, Someone's wait a, a little skinnier, you can get, but they spin around. It just gives you a lot of options when you can do this with the seating. Yes, it's comfortable to sit on, but the fact that they adjust like this, that's what caught my eye. Well, last thing we want to look at this rear casting deck. We've seen this, this type of design before in a lot of boats, but I like a few things that they've done to it. One thing that we've seen before in the Blue Waves and they've incorporated into this deck too, and I really do like the fact that they put a really big release well back here, but not just the release well, it's got a drain about that big. You just cannot clog it up. What you're trying to do is prevent that cigar minnow, that little blue run or whatever, mm -hmm. from getting clogged, and that's exactly what it does. Got additional storage, and you've got the jump seats. You're going to bring your kids on the boat. This is where they're going to sit. Check out what's right next to the seat. Okay, cup holder. Below the cup holder, there's a little door that opens up a USB for their cell phone. Right, and on this rear platform, let's not get away from the fact that it's recessed, which is very, very important, and they've got two live wells back here. Well, the last feature is this ladder. may not be a big deal, but if you're going to use it for towing water toys, snorkeling, diving, whatever, the ladder is good. What I like about the ladder is safety. If you can't get back in the boat, that's a serious issue. But this ladder, if you're in the water, you can easily deploy it and get back in. Well, they put a lot of features in 22 foot of length. We've got a high performance bottom, you're gonna burn less fuel. The casting deck's four and a half. They made it really comfortable to ride in. I think they've addressed any issue you're gonna want in this boat if you're gonna use it for fresh water, salt water, light offshore, anything you wanna do, the boat's up to the task. 
When we return, host Dave East and Rick Riles check out a boat especially designed for family fishing and cruising the bay, the Ranger 2350 Bay Ranger. This segment brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. We do it all. Custom fiberglass repair. Upholstery and canvas work. Custom dash panels. Specializing in insurance claims. Suzuki and Yamaha sales and service. We do it all. One stop boat shop. Home of fantastic plastics and the fiberglass shop. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they explain how different sunglass lenses can improve your fishing in this week's Best Boat Seminar Series. Rick, you know you're my favorite fishing buddy and I'd never go offshore without you, but there's one other thing that I would never think of leaving the dock without and that's a good pair of quality sunglasses. Boy, I tell you, my eye doctor looks at my eyes and he can tell what my history's been like. I'm not allowed out of the house anymore without them on. I'm starting to learn the difference in what I can see through amber and through black lenses. And man, does it make a difference. When I'm out in the deep blue water, I want this dark lens, I can see the fish down deep. But when you're trying to illuminate a flat, nothing works like the amber 580 technology does. Well, the amber is also good for low light conditions. Early, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, when you don't have that sun directly overhead, that's when the ambers really will illuminate everything, light up everything. Well, they're good all around, but one thing I have learned, I'm not leaving the dock without both colors, because you and I both know, if you're gonna be a good fisherman, you better be ready for plan B, because plan A don't always work like we want it to. To enjoy your day out on the water, you can't emphasize enough the importance of being able to see. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they step aboard the Ranger 2350 Bay Ranger. Representing the 23 to 24 foot class in the bay boat category, the Ranger 2350 Bay Ranger has an overall length of 23 feet 4 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Built for running inshore waters and venturing outside of an inlet, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 14 degrees, a dry weight of 3,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 81 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. This is the Ranger 2350, and you know, Ranger is one of those iconic brands that is known for building serious fishing machines, but you know what? I'm not sure that this is one of them. You can fish off of it. We have a trolling motor, we have a shallow water anchor, T-top, we got a nice live well in the back, but that's not this boat's mission. This boat's mission is taking the family to the sandbar, cruising with the neighbors to go to the restaurant. That's why they designed the 2350. I'll, I'll differ with you there. I think this boat concentrates on the fishermen far more than you're giving it credit for. The fishing features are good. It just understands that in today's fishing world, families are a very big part of it. What impressed me about this boat was the ride. The design of their haul was really, really good. We ran through some choppy water. The boat just ate it up. What we don't normally see on V-Haul boats is this nice big wide beam carried forward. Most of them get narrow as you get to the bow and you end up with a small bow. What they've done, they've kept their beam really, really wide all the way to the bow and then came to a V. Look how much more room we've got up here. All right, but let's break it down and see why it fits this boat so well. First off, thank you, Ranger. Listen, if you're gonna have a bay boat, you're gonna want a casting platform up front but they made this one recessed, okay? For us old guys, that's huge. When I'm standing up there, I'm still in the boat. I'm not standing on top of it. Look at their bow seating. The way they've designed these cushions, it wasn't an afterthought. They didn't just put some cushions on us, ah, this is our family model. They're through bolted. They're meant to stay in place. They used an extra heavy density foam where you can stand on the cushion without hurting it. Another thing that was well designed is the way the cushions flip up. They tilt forward. That way you can put your rods in and out of the box when you're in the boat or when the boat's on the trailer. And you've got a little flip-up piece in the back where you can get to the latch. Good, good design. As we move back to the console, it may be a little large for a 23-foot boat, but there's a reason for it. This whole front opens up. And there's a double step going down into there to an enclosed potty. There's also a shelf that will go on top of the potty where if you want to store things in there, it's not going to end up on the floor. It's elevated. They put a lot of thought into the way they designed this boat. Well, the thing jumps out at me about this console immediately is the size of this door. You can not only get in and out, you can put big stuff in there without having to force it through a narrow entry. Good design, you and I both like the front entry consoles. The aft part of the console is designed just as good as the front. Let me show you. Whenever I look at the design of a boat, I look at the little things that a manufacturer does. 
The fact that you can put things on top of the console, they're protected and they won't slide off. This is a boat that the family looks at, especially the wife. She looks at it on the showroom floor and she's like, wow, wow I can see us got. in that boat. That's wow what it's factor. Got. You're right. It's right. got the wow factor. It, it is going to help you make the case back home that this is the boat the family needs. Well, if you really got to sell this boat to mama, I'm going to show you the one feature that she's going to see and fall in love with. Check this out. This is the first 23-foot bay boat that we've seen that has seating that's anything like this. No, you're right. You know why? They eliminated the rear casting platform, okay? Now, that may be a feature that speaks maybe against the fishability, but man, does this make it a nice boat to ride in. Well, you can still fish back here. You just don't have an elevated deck to stand on. You're still plenty high off the water here in the cockpit, and you've got the huge live well here that's a stand up in the middle, something that you like to see on a lot of the boats. So they haven't gotten rid of all the fishing features, but when it comes to the family, this is the place they know they're going to be sitting, they're going to lay out, it's a lounge, it's comfortable for three or four people to sit across, and there's access to all your systems down below. Ranger has come into today's world that's a lot different with a lot more family involvement, and they've done a very good job of dialing it in with this boat. When we come back, hosts Dave East and Rick Ryle step aboard a boat with a proven heritage that is specifically outfitted for blue water, the Stewart Boat Works 27. This segment brought to you by Tough Coat, the world's number one rubberized non-skid coating. Why are more and more boat owners using Tough Coat Marine, the world's number one rubberized non-skid? Because it's so attractive and so easy to apply. The rubber granules used only in Tough Coat Marine is extremely comfortable to my bare feet and knees. From pontoons to houseboats, flats boats to sport fishers, commercial to recreation, even hides nasty spider crabs. For all boat decks or docks, Tough Coat Marine, the world's number one rubberized non-skid. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Stewart Boat Works 27. Representing the 26 to 27 foot class in the center console category, the Stewart Boat Works 27 has an overall length of 27 feet, a beam of 8 feet 8 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Designed for serious offshore fishing, she has a draft of 18 inches a dead rise of 18 degrees, a dry weight of approximately 6,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 140 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. Okay, this is the Stewart Boatworks 27, and when I look at this boat, the only thing I can think of is back to the future, and what I mean by that is the, the roots of this hull design go way back over 30 years. It's a tried and true hull design, but what they've done They've brought it into the future with present technology on construction materials, and they've made some enhancements in the actual shear, the height of the boat. They've, they've really made it better than it, than it ever has been, and the boat's got a killer heritage. Well, it does, and there's a reason why it has a killer heritage. It rides like a champ, okay? This boat came where you see a lot of these are in the Bahamas. And in the Bahamas, Dave, boats aren't toys. They're your primary means of transportation. What does that mean? they have to handle all kinds of conditions and do it well. She doesn't draw too much water. She handles a big sea well. Everything about this boat is simplistic and effective. And you know what? It's got everything you need to take this boat out and be a serious fishing boat, family boat, whatever you want to use it for, but it doesn't have a lot of stuff you don't need. So let's get inside and we'll talk a little bit more about that. The hull is just under 27 feet, but if you look at it, it's got a lot, a lot of room inside for multiple anglers or all of your gear, mainly because they've got this nice flat deck. It runs from the transom all the way to the bow, and there's nothing in between. You can get up to the front of the boat, and you can cast to a rig, or you can cast to a Kobe or to a Ray. You don't have to get up on top of a deck to do that. Sure, you're in the boat. You're not standing on top of the boat when you're up front. Right. And you know my feelings about that. I love it. Check this out. This is a great fish box, right? Mm-hmm. But if you run this all fish box, maybe you run a little low on storage. No, you don't. Watch this. Just the flip of a switch, my boy, all the room you'll ever need. Normally, all this area below deck here is dead space. They used it efficiently. 
Well, there are two live wells in this boat. One's in the back, they're built into the leaner, which is pretty typical in a center console this size. They built another live well up here in the front, under the front seat of the console. Let's say we're fishing up here at the bow, you can transfer some of your baits up here while you're fishing, and then you don't have to run up and back all day. But keep in mind, this is insulated, so it doesn't have to be a live well. That can be your drink cooler. Speaking of simply beautiful, come on back to this console, let me show you something. Tell you what, you look at this dash, it is just what I'm talking about, about being simply beautiful. Look how well everything fits together. And check out where they installed the radio, where they put the engine controls. It's just the way you see it done on, on yacht quality consoles. Well, not only that, if you look inside the console and you look at the quality of the wiring itself, when the wiring is laid out like that, you know exactly where every wire is going, you know what that wire is for. If you have an issue, and if you're gonna have an issue, it's gonna be out there. It's easy to track it down, it's easy to fix. You can control all the boat's functions from your multifunction displays. These switches here, they control all my pumps, they control everything in the boat, all the systems, and you don't have to look around for a switch. But, being a pilot, I like redundancy, right? They've got regular switches down here. So if you're in your GPS screen, or let's just say you have an issue with your display, I like the redundancy of good old fashioned switches. That's a great safety feature to have too. Well, this 27-foot boat's got a nice big console, side entry door, you can easily get down in there and use the head, or you can store a lot of stuff, get out of the weather. But what they've been able to do is keep a really nice sized cockpit. I tell you what, well, you know how much I love this live well. Best live well design there is, and I'll tell you why. It's round, it pumps a lot of water, plenty of gallons per hour going through it, but more importantly, I'm always gonna prefer a live well that's above the deck. Not only is it easier to get to your bait, Boy, the ultimate disaster would be for a fitting to fail below deck. You ever think about that? And you're a whole lot safer with your live wells up here where you know right away if you've got a problem. Back to their simplistic design, look at their rear bench seat. Flip it up when you need it, fold it down when it's out of the way. The backrest is removable. Making a long run, it's a great place to sit and rig baits. If you're bringing the family, it's a great place to sit. But if you don't need it, it's out of the way and they haven't taken up a lot of cockpit space to have rear seating. Simply effective is what this boat can best be described at. You want a boat to go fish in and a boat that's easy to take care of and looks like a million bucks and rides like a million bucks, this might be the best boat for you. Well, if you want more information on the three boats you've seen today or really any of the boats that we've tested this year in Best Boat, go to our website, floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Fort Pierce City Marina in Fort Pierce, Florida, featuring a full-service, state-of-the-art dock system within walking distance from excellent restaurants and historic downtown Fort Pierce. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.